Three good times, greatest hits. Good morning to you and welcome to The Bright Side. Caroline is out with you and joining us in the studio is our very esteemed guest, Singapore's first happiness scientist, Yo Sha En, who is back to join us. Hello, Sha En. Morning. Yay. Hey, Sha hey. Good to have you back with us. Happy to be back. Yeah, we're live on Facebook, facebook.com slash 1FM913. Now, Sha En is a number one best-selling author, a TEDx speaker and founder of Happiness Scientist and incoming president of Asia Professional Speaker Singapore. Congratulations Yay. on the new appointment. Have you Thank assumed you. the role yet? Not yet, not yet. Are we the next time you see me, maybe yes. We call you President Elect. When is the inauguration? <laughs> <laughs> End of July, probably. We missed the over. elections, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you won the vote, right? It wasn't a. F- wasn't no, a you still have to go through a voting process. Oh, but okay, yeah, okay. Like not normally, it is okay. a normal process from vice president to president. Okay. I think you'll be great. You're so organized and so detailed, mm-hmm. so on the ball about yeah. everything, <laughs> which is why we love having you here. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be on time all the time <laughs> yeah that, you know it's such a great trait right Very to be good. punctual I feel yeah. like we you know we get smarter every time we chat with you so today <laughs> we are talking about what it means to be doing your best or be your best because it's a phrase that we hear a lot what is mm. it you know just do your best just try your best but you know how can we unpack that and break it down yeah I guess I was inspired by this quote that I saw on Instagram you know that said friendly reminder that doing your best does not mean pushing yourself to the point of a mental breakdown Mm. And it made me reflect like, yeah, we use this phrase so casually, right? But do people listen to the phrase and think like, but what does that mean for me today? Mm. You know, and some people come back to work and have a hard time. Some people are going through transitions. And doing your best could simply mean I'm just showing up today with a cup of coffee and <laughs> and getting through the day. And just working right? with a screensaver. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, right? But when we say that phrase, it's almost like you imagine the person to be like, all right, I've got my 10 things on my to-do list. I'm going to power through it. Da, 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 da. I did my best at work. You yeah. know? But it's mm. almost like not everybody do your best looks the same yeah not all day every day it's hard to be giving 100% all the time especially at work and it depends on your colleagues as well maybe you are with people who are like high achievers go get us and then the guilt can set in very quickly it's like oh I'm I'm underperforming I'm not uh, running as fast as my mates right exactly and I mean that's because I was in my client came up to me and said but Shah I'm already doing my best like what more can I do and she was under pressure from her boss Mm. to just keep showing up Mm. and when we when I listened to her I was like oh my gosh she's already doing so many amazing things and so it made me think about expectations as well when we say the phrase do your best what are the expectations we have for the other person Mm -hmm. and then does that match with their own expectations of themselves that's because it's very relative isn't it when you Mm -hmm. say do your best what what one person's best is another pretty mediocre right so how, how how do we kind of this disparity how do we kind of overcome that yeah I mean I guess if it's between like a boss and, a, and an employee maybe it's a good conversation to have right you know what does your day to day look like I feel that people don't do that enough mm. yeah they just assume that my picture is your picture and so perhaps it would be good to ask you know maybe not ask straight away with what's your best look like but like you know what's your day to day look like mm. you know do you even know what it goes on in your, in your mm. team members day you know, and what are they coping with? What are, do they have to get through to for this day to actually work for them and thus be able to produce the work that you're expecting? Yeah. You know, and if we don't have these conversations, then you're left to assumptions. And when things don't get to your standard and you're not hitting the KPI, so to speak, then both parties get disappointed, right? Yeah. The, the person working on it will say, but I really did my best. But their standards are that today I'm exhausted. Mm. I've got, you know I've got a sick child at home. Yeah, my, my best is that I actually came to work. I didn't take MC. I do feel right? like sometimes that's an achievement in itself. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes here in Singapore, I do feel like some you know our boss expects like a lot from us, and when you do try and convey that expectation or the reality of your current situation, and then you feel like you're letting them down, or then mm. you you know you feel like you're going to be marked down by your boss as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of internal guilt already as it is, mm. right? And so part of what I was thinking is sometimes we need to have a bit more self-compassion for us you know as we are going through the work day especially if we already feel like we're pushing ourselves and certainly we don't want to go to the point where you know we get home all depleted and the people in our lives get nothing from us Mm. you know yeah that's what I've been thinking about 
All right. So, at what stage is it okay to say this to your kid, and what do we, how do we want to, you know, craft that conversation with our children when we use this phrase? Just try your best or do your best. I think that's also up for consideration. Yeah, right? I think with, with kids, we can articulate what that means to you as a parent. Mm. Yeah, so that they can understand what that means. Mm. Let's dive into this on Facebook. Join yeah. us there, facebook.com/slash one fm nine one three. Back with more of Shine in just a bit. Hi, good morning everyone hey. and welcome to Facebook. We're Hi. back with Sha'an and we're chatting about what it means to be doing your best. And uh, Shaz, you're a parent, right? Yeah. Is that a phrase you use with your, your child? You know, do your best, try your best? This is a tricky one, right, Sha'an? Mm, you're a parent yeah. as well because yeah. more often than not, more often than not, as a parent, you know that the kid can do a lot more. Mm. Kids don't often feel like they have to push themselves necessarily to the max. And mm-hmm. why should they? They're kids. They don't, they, don't, they don't feel that need. Yeah, so is it yeah. okay to be using this phrase on them? I'm, I'm wondering. Well, and, and for them, in their mind, it's very clear cut. Yeah. I tried my best, mm-hmm. right? And they think that's their best. However, as most parents feel, they think their, parent, their kids can do so much more. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least that's what they think yeah. in their mind. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we overcome And, and I do think that as a parent. Right. And, and sometimes it's apparent to me that they're not doing their not really doing their best, right? Because maybe certain reasons like for example it's the end of a long day yeah. or they just don't like it. So sometimes when they use that phrase, I'll say, let let's let's pause for a minute, you know. <laughs> what, what does it mean, you know? Let's break that down. But but <laughs> then it, uh, and then you know, when when I see certain mannerisms I already know that, you know The tell. They have a tell, right? Yeah. Kids have a tell. Exactly. You know. And then I will, you know, just explain to them and say that, you know, if there's stuff that's getting in your way, mm. um, you can tell me. You know, I think that conversation is important, yeah, that's good one. right? That's good. As opposed to just telling them do your best, because as you said, if they already think they are, yeah. then what more is there to do? Correct. They'll right. be like, oh, but and they'll just like sit there and do nothing. Correct. Yeah. So you're kind of hitting a brick wall there, yeah. right? But at the same time, we don't want to be the tiger parent that says that's not good enough, because then it it instills in them a message that they're never good enough which mm. is also not That's true. That's a very good point. So it's kind of trying to find that balance by acknowledging the efforts they've already put in but also knowing that hey, you know, there's, there's more that can be done but maybe there's something in their way. Maybe they're scared of something. Maybe they are tired. Maybe they are just hungry. Mm. You know, the phrase hangry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Right? Hangry then become very tired and then grouchy and then therefore I've done my best a lot of world problems and issues could be resolved if everyone just had their hanger <laughs> issues dealt with <laughs> I feel you know <laughs> yeah, um, so helping them to find that balance is actually good for their own self-awareness yeah right I actually maybe didn't do my 100% today yeah but they were scared to tell you that mm. right because if not you'd be like why why you never mm. you know so our response matters too yeah I that's think, a good point because know. also that they know they don't want to there's an innate thing of not wanting to disappoint your parents yes, as well, exactly. isn't it? And they're also yeah. looking at you, you know, like, what kind of mood are you in? Mm-hmm. Are you hangry parents? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. A good point. Sometimes you're tired. I mean, they could bring the same piece of news and depending on what mood you're in, yeah. uh, it could be received very differently too, right? Mm. Yeah. Wow, so much to think about. Um, so what could get in the way of being our best? Um, I mean, uh, multiple of factors. Uh, we start with internal factors, maybe feeling anxiety or stress or uncertainty. Mm. I think the word uncertainty is like it's everywhere and change is constant, right? Mm. So as, as an adult going through work life, I mean, there's so many things that we don't know. And so that could get in the way because when we don't have information, that's why we become anxious. We're trying to find the answers and when there are no answers to be found, then you start to make up stories. Mm. Not that you want to. The brain just automatically put things together, right? Whether you have complete information or not. Then the other one is, of course, like exhaustion, which is like we talk about burnout. Mm. That's pretty common nowadays. Um, and when you're exhausted, well, how do you be your best? Your body is telling you like 2,000% go to bed. <laughs> but then you you cognitively have to function at work. Yeah. yeah. So that can be really challenging. Right? Yeah, especially sleep. I mean, sleep is such a huge factor. Sorry, what's that? <laughs> okay. I was taking a nap. Number yeah. one sleep deprived <laughs> person kidding. on the team. Yeah. He's right here. <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with the European Championships at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about when you feel that you're doing your best, um, but people keep saying they don't think you're doing your best and they keep pushing you? Yeah. How, how do you respond to that? Now, you I said mean, have mm. a conversation, but you've got to do something, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky one. Um, I would go the route first of checking in with myself mm. and asking, well, what does my best mean to me? Because if we are not sure, then we are always swayed by everybody telling you you're not your best. But I think that internal self sense of 
who am I and what am I doing? What does the being best mean to me? That's really important. And that could mean checking in with your body. Like, I'm doing my best. I'm actually pushing myself. And we actually know that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then if we already know that, then at least we can feel within ourselves like, okay, I'm actually not lying to myself. And I can tell my boss confidently or my colleagues that I'm putting out my best. You know, the no. more we talk about it, I'm just wondering about this phrase, like who coined it? And should yeah. is there a need for us to be giving our best? I mean, not that we, we put up shoddy work or anything like that, but you know, there's, there's like yeah. a lot of pressure. It's almost as if like I'm being judged for not trying hard enough. Yeah, precisely. And that is the, exactly the reason why I started thinking about it. So yeah. is this phrase so kosher loosely, or not? Right? Yeah. Is it okay? <laughs> Can we ban this phrase? Can we say something like, give it all you've got? <laughs> I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that it, it's a good conversation to think about. You yeah. Know, what does it mean for the receiving party? Mm. Right. And when you do say it, who are you saying it to? And do they get what you're and saying? And how it's said. Yeah. Right. Exactly. If it's said with a lot of pressure, like, do, do your it. best. Yeah. Do your best. I'm always here for you. Yeah. Do your best. And it feels almost manipulative. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, of course, we don't want to delve into every single phrase that we've heard and challenge all of it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> right. I'm, I was just caught by the fact that sometimes it can be used. As a badge of honor mm. for just hustling non stop yeah. and not knowing how to take care of yourself. Because there yeah. was a period of time where, you know, there was a lot of pride in, like, you know, oh, I'm hustling every yeah. day, I'm hustling, yeah. you know, like that song. Yeah. And there's a lot yeah. of pride that I don't sleep, I don't eat, yeah. I just yeah. like push myself to the max. That's how I make the money, that's mm. how I live my life. And uh, it was a badge of honor. People saw that as, exactly. you know, this is, this is what success looks like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now we're starting to unpack that. Because it comes to a point of burnout, it comes to a point of unhappiness. Actually, why am I really pushing myself so hard for yeah, what? Yeah. yeah, and on the other hand, you they have the opposite. I'm doing my best, but actually they're not. They really know they're not. They're and not. Yeah. The whole phenomenon with quiet quitting, you know. <laughs> mm. yeah. I mean, it's almost something like that. So I'm doing my best, one. Can't you see? Yeah. It's almost like a defense mechanism. Mm. So it's because it's extreme, right? Whenever you have extremes like best. It's like there's nothing better than best. Yeah. <laughs> then where do you go? Yeah. W- would you say that everyone kind of knows inside them? They innately know that they're doing their best or not, and they just need to be honest with themselves sometimes. Yeah, I I think so. But at the same time, depending on past experiences, they may not really know. Some people are out of touch with their body. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it, we have seen that. So like, I have, have to do a self audit kind of thing. Almost, yeah. Like yeah. they don't know they're pushing their best until pom they went home and they collapsed. I've seen cases like that. What kind wow. of people are these? Are they go-getters, people pleasers? Yes, moms. a lot of pe- people pleasers. <laughs> yes, mo- I mean moms. People who are maybe pulled in many pieces mm. into many different directions and sometimes they don't realize it. Mm. And they just look at the person like we talked about comparison. Mm. It can be rather unhealthy. And you look at that person That person seems to be like Wow That person seems to have it all together I need to be all together mm. But that's not really being 100% honest Whether can you physically Or mentally Or emotionally Take it at that point in time But it looks good right it does Because look good. you get a lot of affirmation When you seem to be able to put everything together I think this is where work culture Also comes into play yeah. uh, You know where you work Actually does affect your mental state Because of the people you work with mm. If everyone's like a hustler And go 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 all the time Then wow If you're not at that speed Or if you're in a season of life Where you can't keep up with that yeah. I think you have to be aware yeah. About what you can commit And what you can't commit I mean, to And a great question to ask is What can we do today Right. Yeah. That, and and sometimes as as a boss, you need to help your employees prioritize. Mm. Many actually, I found that many people that I speak to are always just waiting for the boss to tell them what to do, mm. oh. or they feel that every deadline is urgent and important, and mm. doing your best means meeting every deadline. I mean, I'm sure you've experienced that before. Yeah. For sure. I think right? we definitely got to go back on air and just recap that thought mm. about how, you know, there is an expectation on our part, the, the way we interpret our boss's instructions sometimes yeah. to just constantly give a thousand percent yeah. in order to, I don't know, like be accepted. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And then when, when that doing your best it's still not good enough you get a sense of hopelessness and well I've got nothing what left else? to no, give I've right? given everything yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, wow. I'm really not seeing much of my kids I'm already like oh, six hours four yeah. hours a night mm. what do you want mm. you know and then it breeds a lot of resentment it does alright yeah. we're just going to be heading back live on air for this little discussion send us your questions uh, as a comment want to say a good morning to Alun hello and uh, yeah or WhatsApp us 8850913 
Muse with Starlight here at 1FM 91.3. We are talking to Yosha Un about uh, doing your best or trying your best. How about that that phrase mm. when you say, but I tried my best. Mm -hmm. Then you get told, don't try, just do. Yeah, that's, another <laughs> co that's another common that's one. That's a very Yoda saying. <laughs> well, I mean, trying is of course important. Like if you look at the, you know, the research on growth mindset, effort and process are important to achieving whatever it is. But again, if it, again if it's used um, like this, you know, just try, don't do. I think that that to me is like you didn't even ask what does try your best mm. mean. Mm. It's more of a telling. Right. Mm. And when everything comes across as a telling, then you actually do not know. And if you do not know, then. What do you think the person is doing? Mm. <laughs> you know? Why and do we so sometimes feel like our best is not good enough? Especially when it comes to, say, work deadlines, you know, working for your boss and yeah. all that. Why do, why do we carry around this sense of guilt? Yeah, I mean, maybe the expectations were not clearly conveyed in the first place and therefore you keep trying to push and push and push. Maybe there's not enough appreciation and recognition. Mm. And I, I, I see that a lot as well. I call it the underrated superpower that bosses need to master. Mm. Because if the person is doing their best and they've, and they've shown up and you're not acknowledging and recognizing that the person may not know and therefore we walk yeah. around with guilt yeah you know, you know i made that one mistake and then we focus so much on the mistake as opposed to the 90 percent of the greatness that we've done you know it's because it has yeah. not been acknowledged it's not uncommon to hear this phrase no news is good news yeah it's almost as if it's yeah. a given it's expected for you to be performing at this level the mm, super high level correct. and anything other than that you are falling short so some company cultures are like that yes. if you don't hear from me it means you're just doing the bare minimum which is your best yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah without the yeah. acknowledgement and yeah. here you are on burnout mode already exactly yeah, yeah you know, and so i mean that's i think that's pretty common that if you we, i read through a lot of employee surveys in the course of my work mm. and one of the things that constantly comes up is that they don't feel appreciated yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know sometimes i think it's not just about doing your best you, sometimes a boss just wants you to do better mm. better than where you are yeah. and maybe and that's driven by pressure isn't it correct because if the kpis are not met and 100% of everyone's doing their best. The boss is under pressure because there's still a gap between what's being done and the KPI, and the KPI. that needs to be met. How do and we... Yeah. So there's always that, like, let's continue to do more. We can do it, right? Let's keep pushing. And if it's short term, I would say maybe short term is all right because they, everyone has something to look forward to. There's a reprieve at the end. Mm. It's when it's long term and there's no end in sight, that's very, that's very exhausting. Mm. So how do we delicately... Yeah navigate those conversations mm. without shooting ourselves in the foot you know what I mean <laughs> I mean just being I, it depends really on the person that you're working with you know if the person is someone who maybe is just KPI driven and doesn't really give two hoots about you I would say maybe that conversation isn't going to go well but mm. still bring it up anyway yeah. the reason is that if you don't bring it up then they don't know Yeah. and if you have brought it up once or twice or third time then um, at some point you have to ask yourself is it worth all this effort oh. from me yeah because right? yeah. we're talking about company culture maybe yeah. that is just a company culture yeah. and maybe you're in a season where you're not able to yeah. do that or keep up with that anymore yeah I but think you, you know what does help um, I think recently there's a lot of talk about flexi work arrangements mm. that often helps right mm. people do want to do their best generally right and if they have no flexibility that's also one of the reasons that could impede their ability to function well. Yeah, yeah. so go so back much to the, the source, back. right? Address yeah. the source, address right, the problem. Exactly, yeah. you know? The other thing that I always hear is also, oh, if you can't do this, then that's the door. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's so an ultimatum threat kind yeah. of environment. Does that's that come up toxic. in your conversations? Um, it does, but maybe not the first time. Yeah. yeah. But I guess if the person repeatedly not eat or in the boss's mm. view not able to perform, yeah. then at some point they run out of ideas of how to talk to this person and so they go for the ultimatum. Mm. Right? If you listen from the boss's perspective, which I do, they will say, but this person underperforming, so if I don't give some ultimatum, maybe they're just going to slack. Yeah. This is the mentality uh, that they have. Right? Yeah. And so it cuts both ways, I suppose. So instead of saying there's the door or there's a long queue for people yeah. waiting to come and do what you want to do, how else can you navigate that conversation? I mean, I would ask, what is getting in the way of you being able to show up with the work that you want to do? Mm. What's getting in the way? We don't ask this question yeah. often enough. And then once they tell you, well, what can I do to support you? Yeah. You know, there, there will always be resources that you yeah. can offer, even if it's not in your time. Sometimes you, you yourself have no bandwidth as the boss. Mm. Offer resources. Who can you go to to get these questions answered? 
you know. This sounds very yeah. empathetic, and yeah. I don't know whether bosses generally are regarded in that way that they have the empathy. Maybe, as you say, they might be under pressure from some from other yeah. sources, and they feel. Zero to sixty, bang! Slam the table. And say, hey, you're not doing your best. Instead of trying to understand why. Yeah, people. but I mean, you can't squeeze blood out from a yeah. stone. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's either you let the person go, and you have to go through the process of rehiring and retraining. Mm. That not only costs your company money, but mm. it costs you as the boss time because you have to do the training. Yeah, I mean. So it's it's a choice. I think it comes back to we always have a choice. What choice do you want to make? But you make a good point. Yeah. I think trying the compassionate approach first is always the best way as well because then it's a connection. There's a human connection. Your employee understands. Hey, I'm not just another hit count number. Mm. I'm here connecting with people. You know, yeah, and yeah. I have a life too outside of work. Uh, yeah. Shan, thank you so much for joining us thank here you today. For thank you, Shan. Good conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely gave us a lot to think about. You know, with the phrase, what does it mean to do your best? Worst case when you. Getting you know into trouble with the boss, you can quote them the ACS motto: "The best is yet to be." <laughs> ah, <laughs> so pressurizing. <laughs>